you've got the perfect setup. We had a massive bear market. It hit that long-term trend, two standard deviation, deviations oversold, triggered all the kind of technical signals you want. Right when my forward-looking indicators suggest the economy starts picking up over time, but debasement is going to increase. It's like it's the perfect signal. And now you've got the institutions to come into the space and regulatory clarity in the U, UK, Europe, Switzerland, Australia, Hong Kong, Singapore, and the US will get it at some point in the cycle. And then the Bitcoin ETF. It's like, okay, this is it. Game on. Raul Powell, co-founder and CEO of Genuine Vision, thinks that conditions are now ideal for a crypto bull market, which would result in significant price increases for cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. He is particularly upbeat about Ether and Solana. He predicts that investors will experience at least a 5x rally from prior lows thanks to the numerous use cases of both networks. Raul Pal based his forecasts for the cryptocurrency market on a few variables, including crypto fundamentals and impending macro events. On the macro level, he says that a high interest rate environment is wholly unsustainable due to the increasing aging population and high debt levels in the majority of the developing world. As a result, the macro guru anticipates central banks, especially the US Federal Reserve, to start rolling back some of their stringent monetary policies soon, in order to avoid spending more than the GDP growth rate to refinancing their incredibly large debts. This reversal would of course include rate cuts. Between the end of this year and the beginning of 2025, when the majority of central banks will be refinancing their debts, we can anticipate further currency depreciation in the United States and other major economies. Rao Pal predicts that interest rate reductions and further currency depreciation will boost asset prices significantly, as they have in previous cycles. However, there are two unique metrics for cryptocurrencies that Pal claims are also pointing to the ideal conditions for a significant crypto bull market. The first is the continuous wave of regulatory clarity provided for the cryptocurrency business. This has been done in the EU, UK, Switzerland, Australia, and Hong Kong, and there have recently been numerous discussions about doing the same thing in the US. More institutional investors will feel more at ease investing a portion of their enormous portfolios in cryptocurrency, as a result of our clearly stated policies in these key jurisdictions. The approval of a spot Bitcoin ETF is another aspect that he thinks will be very positive for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. The macro guru claims that the likelihood of receiving one soon is extremely high given the applications from BlackRock and Fidelity. In a recent interview with Options Insight, he makes his case for an approaching crypto bull market. The macro guru talks about the exponential rise of AI and his everything code thesis. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave your comments and thoughts in the space below as we bring you snippets from the interview. The big thesis is I don't believe with an aging population and high debt that you can have sustainably high interest rates. And I've proven in the everything code, I think proven, that the entire increase of the central bank balance sheet of the US, the UK, and Europe and Japan is just the monetization of interest payments. So what they're doing is just debasing the currency to pay the interest because the interest payments are too high. And that tells you, well, we're either going to get massive central bank printing with rates of 5% or they're going to have to get rates back down again fast. Uh, and that's what I think the game is. I think with trend rate of GDP at one and three quarter percent in the US, you need to get interest rates down to the same kind of level because the government is 100% of GDP in debt. So if interest rates are 1.75% and growth is 1.75%, then all of GDP growth just goes to pay the government debt. Mm -hmm. That is not sustainable considering the private sector is another 120% of debt. So this is, this is the game in town. That's what the everything code is built on. Yeah. If you have this framework of understanding that they have to get rates down to GDP growth or below. So that mm. tells you the world doesn't function with rates above 2%, let's say, 1.5%. So to absolutely ensure they need to do it, they need to stamp out all inflation expectations now so then they can cut it down to 1.5%. That's what is going on because they know they have to refi at 1.5% or less. If not, when is the refi? balance sheet when goes is exponential. The, when is the refi due then? 
It starts at the back end of this year and it's really in 2024 and 2025. Okay. Huge problems because you either completely collapse the economy because the government interest payments take out all of economic growth and shrink, plus the private mm -hmm. sector, or the balance sheet needs to go exponential, which would be horrific. Because uh, mm -hmm. then asset price goes, you lose control of the system if you're not careful. So this is, I think, the game. This is why Jay Powell is being so obstinate about rates, even though everybody and their dog with a basic understanding of forward-looking economic indicators can tell that, you know, we've killed growth and killed inflation. He just has to get that inflation expectation down so they can cut rates one half percent. If he can engineer headline inflation to go negative, which I think is going to happen, mm. he's got the green light to cut back down to one and a half percent. Right? It's just once you understand this, and look, Yellen ran the Fed. There is no difference between the BOJ governor and the Ministry of Finance. There is no difference between the Treasury and the Fed. There is no difference between the ECB and the and the governments. They all are in this together because nothing works unless they do, and they all understand the game they're playing. And why it's called the Everything Code is I backed it out a number of different ways, and it all came up to the same answers, is, okay, we can forecast debasement based around, A, on either trend, or we can base it on the interest payments, or we can base it on demographics. They all come to the same thing. And if I can therefore forward forecast liquidity, and liquidity, which is debasement, a lot of people are misusing liquidity in how I think of it, debasement is how I look. If, they, if I can forecast it out to 2026, and the NASDAQ has a 97% correlation, I can forecast assets out to 2026. Now, this is a thesis, a hypothesis, which is why I don't release any of these targets publicly. But um, what it suggests is it's all one trade. So then, as I said, you just want to buy the biggest performing asset. So I've, I've been saying this beginning of the year, all of last year, this is what's going to happen. And if I look through the asset growth now, so obviously Bitcoin is up 83%. The next biggest is my exponential age basket. 71%, then the NASDAQ, 42%, then the S&P at 17%. So it's, mm -hmm. it's showing itself exactly as I expected. <clears throat> and that's without much monetary stimulus. Basically, monetary stimulus has gone sideways, but year on year rate of change is going up. Kathy was kind of at the peripheral for me. I'm a macro guy, right? And tech always looked overvalued. And so I didn't really like it. I understand there was a lot of technology coming and it was an interesting space, intellectually interesting. But as a macro guy, I just didn't understand it. And it was not until I sat down, I saw the debasement of currency and then figured out that the NASDAQ outperforms it all, that I'm like, what do I not understand here? And then I started seeing the big picture, which was what I referred to as the exponential age, this nexus of all these technologies coming together and completely disrupting everything that we know. And that my expectation was back in 2020, that we were going to see the largest pace of technological change the world has ever seen in the shortest period of time. Because many of these technologies have been worked on, but we're now getting ready for public release. And blockchain was one of them. So that was the fastest adoption of any technology the world has ever seen. But my thesis was built around AI, robotics, data, compute, internet of things, genetics, genetic science, um, EV, all, all of these things, this big picture space. And I realized, oh my God, this is all gonna happen at the same time. And how the hell are we gonna cope? It's like a fourth turning moment where we completely reimagine everything. And I started writing about that in 2020 and everyone thought I was a total moron, um, that I was just like a Kathy Wood junkie and I was, you know, I couldn't see it, I was an idiot. And I started, I didn't buy any until 2022 when I started averaging in from about May into the big sell off. Because I'm like, here's the opportunity. I usually use step back, use a big log um, chart, put the standard deviation bands on it that I can do easily on my Bloomberg. When it got to about two or three standard deviations oversold, that's usually like a once in a lifetime opportunity to buy a secular trend. Um, so I started buying a basket of stuff. And then again, people thought I was stupid until got to about November 2022 and um, AI came. And everyone's mm. like, oh my God. 
And then by February, OpenAI had gone from zero to 100 million users in five weeks. And the world has changed completely. And that was just the start. I mean, the robots are, are coming out, you know, self-driving cars. I think it's a year and a half away now before Tesla cracks that entirely. We're seeing that on a number of different levels. Um, we will see a lot of this stuff accelerating because AI is an accelerant. It's like a foundational layer, compute power, you know, NVIDIA, all of that kind of stuff. You know, the semis um, plus the AI level layer and then the energy layer, which is, you know, the cheaper cost of electricity driven by um, EV, green energy and nuclear will lower the cost of energy. And that's going to be, create a productivity miracle over time. If you think of the world now, we've got aging population, highly in debt, low growth. And productivity has been going down and down and down. So you're going to have to take some pain and it's going to end up on the central bank balance sheet to do it, which is to subsidize this, the fossil fuel transition, until you do that. The faster you do that, if you look at the inflation adjusted price of oil since about 1960, 1960 it's about $40. So that's your fixed cost to all productivity. And technology just means more output per barrel of oil, call it that. So it translates into electricity. If you can drive down that barrel of oil equivalents to $10, the multiplier is 4x. That's fucking staggering. That will change everything for humanity. If you can get the marginal cost of electricity down to near zero, you will change the outcome for society. So I think it's it's exactly what Europe should be doing. And yes, they will take some pain to do it and they should do it. The US kind of did this in the 1940s and 50s with the New Deal. Uh, they rebuilt the infrastructure from scratch. And what happened was the 1960s uh, where we started to see a boom and that really drove America up until 2000 probably. Raul Pal anticipates that central banks will soon start injecting billions of dollars into the economy causing sharp increases in the price of cryptocurrencies. Do you believe this will be the catalyst for the subsequent crypto bull market? Please share your opinions in the section below. Make sure to check out our other cryptocurrency related videos, subscribe to the channel, and enable post notifications. Thank you for watching.